Jackson Dart will defeat the Georgia Bulldogs because his legacy absolutely depends on it. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports and a former Ole Miss staff member as well. Today, we're diving into a defining moment for Jackson Dart. With the stage set against a supremely talented Georgia Bulldogs team, Dart has a chance to secure his signature win of his career. This could be one of the biggest games in Ole Miss history with everything on the line, playoffs the whole nine yards. If he can pull off this victory, it would cement his legacy and maybe even put him into statue territory under Lane Kiffin. Listen, we're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special load to the insiders and everydayers who make the show what it is. Do not forget to find that second listen on the network. Chris Gordy at Locked On SEC, Corey Burton at Locked On Vandy, even Zach Blackerby at Locked On Auburn. They offer great perspectives on the SEC college football and, yes, even Ole Miss. Check them out. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Probably would come in very handy this weekend. So, as I mentioned before, this is Jackson Dart's legacy game. This is the one thing on Jackson Dart's resume that he needs. Yes, I realize that he had massive wins against LSU and Penn State a year ago. I get that. But a game that means as much as this game means. When 500,000 people are probably going to be in Oxford, Mississippi this weekend, when um, the college football playoff is on the line, when Jackson Dart is on his record march to where he is going to own every significant passing record in Ole Miss history, and quarterback record, to be perfectly honest, when he is the winningest quarterback in Ole Miss history, what is separating him from being known as the greatest of all time? His legacy of being the best quarterback to ever play at the University of Mississippi. And that is this win. If Jackson Dart can beat Georgia, handle business against Florida and Mississippi State, and get Ole Miss to the college football playoffs, he is the greatest quarterback that will ever suit up for Ole Miss. Period. You might have your favorites from when you were a kid. I am very fond of Russ Shiles and Tom Luke because they were playing quarterback at Ole Miss when I was 16 years old. So I remember that implicitly. Um, There's several people that are very big fans of Matt Corral. Um, Chad Kelly, Bo Wallace, Archie Manning. Depending on the childhood age that the child was, that's going to be their favorite Ole Miss quarterback. That's just the way that works. But when you look at this and what Jackson Dart has at his disposal before his signature win, before the biggest win potentially in the history of the University of Mississippi, he's going to own the single-game passing mark, the single-game total offense mark, breaking the Archie Manning record that nobody thought. It was the Cy Young record of Ole Miss football. He broke that record in three quarters against Arkansas. He is likely going to be the single season passing record. He needs to average about 270 yards a game to accomplish that feat. He is going to break the total offense record probably as well for the single season. He is the going to be, he is already the career total offense man, and he is 190 yards a game away from breaking Eli's passing record. Essentially, every record that is worthwhile, Jackson Dart is going on. And all he needs is that super signature win, that big-time game that gets Ole Miss to a level that we didn't think that Ole Miss could get to or took them to the next round. That is what is lacking from Jackson Dart's resume as a, quote, senior. I don't know what his actual classification is, but this is his last year in school. If he can pull off the win against Georgia to have a situation where all you have to do is go down to Florida and win, all you have to do is beat Mississippi State and you're essentially in the playoffs, that is a different realm for Ole Miss football. I compared him in the offseason to Connor Shaw from South Carolina, who was the quarterback there in the early 2010s, I think. He is beloved as the greatest quarterback in all time in South Carolina history. He's the winningest quarterback in all time. 
there's a lot of similarities between Jackson Dart and Connor Shaw. And I'm not getting into NFL potential and all of that stuff. I'm talking about being a winner at the college level. And both of them do that as well as anybody else in college football. Jackson Dart needs the big win. Connor Shaw beat Georgia. Connor Shaw won games that they didn't expect him to win. Jackson Dart needs that for his legacy moving forward. Listen, it's the difference in Jackson Dart being all alone is the greatest of all time at quarterback. Whenever you do your Mount Rushmore's or your top five list that everybody loves to do in May and June, Jackson Dart will be obviously number one, and then they argue about two down. That's what at stake. If he can beat Georgia and win out this season, that's where he will be. Number one, no doubt, that's just all there is to it. If he loses this game, he's just another great quarterback. He's on the same tier as Eli Manning, as Chad Kelly, as the arguments can go back and forth because Jackson Dart will have, honestly, the Dan Marino stigma of not being able to win the big game. That'll be the one thing that would haunt him the rest of his life, essentially, for his Ole Miss legacy. If he can win this game, if he can win this big, massive, huge game where Ole Miss is an underdog, Play really well. Use the weapons he has. Now, Lane Kiffin and everybody has to have a good game plan, and they have to be prepared for Kirby and Glenn Schumann to adjust to what they were doing. They did not do that a year ago. They have experience playing that. Now, Jackson Dart needs to play smart, play efficiently, efficiently, and just get the win. He beats Georgia. It's statue talk conversation time. And if you can do that, I mean, think about this era of college football that we saw from Ole Miss over the last few years. To where, other than it getting weird after that Alabama game in 2022, because it got weird after that. The Auburn stuff popped up and it became a circus. Ole Miss ended up dropping like four straight games or something like that. Including the last one they lost against Mississippi State. But if you take that as the anomaly, he had eight wins that year. He had 11 a year ago, and you're looking at 10-plus if Ole Miss beats Georgia this year. There's a chance that he could walk out with 30 wins in three years, which is ridiculous If when you think about an Ole Miss quarterback doing it. That's five ahead of number two on the winningest all-time quarterback list. It's at the point where in three years, there's not a single quarterback that played before 1968 that could even win that number of games. The maximum they could win, not counting bowl games, was 27. So if he hit 30, that's like a perfect season every year in a bowl game. This is very heady territory for Jackson Dart. And Jackson Dart has answered every single question that we've had about him through his Ole Miss career. Every time we want to count him out, we can't really do that. So this is what you need to watch for. This week, Jackson Dart can clear the way to being the bit, the greatest Ole Miss quarterback by beating Georgia. The second thing you need to watch for is how does weather play out in the Georgia Bulldogs versus Ole Miss Rebels game? And the number three is will Ole Miss get 70,000 people into Vault Hemingway Stadium on Saturday? We'll talk about that as well. Again, Jackson Dart can have his legacy game by beating the Georgia Bulldogs. And when you look at the numbers that he has, 198 for 278 this season, 3,210 yards. That is number one in all of college football. 21 touchdowns, three interceptions, a big game against the Georgia Bulldogs. Honestly, could propel him back into the Heisman discussion. That is what the game against Arkansas propelled him to do. I do not know what happened at halftime of the Oklahoma game, but it completely changed Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart also got away from the visor Um, against Arkansas, and he had that day. I don't know if it mattered, but coincidentally, it looked like something. The players that you need to watch in this game is obviously Jackson Dart. You know, shocker, the quarterback is going to be a big deal in a big game. And then Dominic Thomas, I'm paying attention to him, especially if it's a rain game. He's a guy that is built like Dalton Hilliard was, for those who remember the 1980s Saints and the early 80s LSU Tigers. Somebody that has a really big lower body, he falls forward. I think he could help Ole Miss out in the run game against Georgia because of that. 
And with weather potentially in the forecast, Walter Nolan and the run-stopping ability of Ole Miss's defense is going to become a major league deal. Georgia this year is not running the ball particularly well, but you still have to stop them. And if Georgia broke out running the football, it would surprise literally no one. That's just the way that kind of works. Rain is in the forecast for Ole Miss versus Georgia. Could wet conditions give the Rebels an edge? We'll tell you why Ole Miss might be better prepared to weather this storm than the Georgia Bulldogs. Stick around. Guys, sometimes those intimate moments happen when you least expect it, and you always want to be ready to perform with confidence. But if you're dealing with ED, that can feel like attic pressure. That's where Hims comes in. Hims provides access to treatments to help you stay hard and last longer. So you're ready whenever the moment strikes. Hims is changing men's health care by giving you access to affordable sexual health treatments right from the comfort of your couch. With doctor trusted ED treatments, including chewable hard mints and generics for Viagra and Cialis up to 95% less, Hims make it, makes it simple and affordable to get the help you need. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for awkward doctor visits. Just answer a few questions, and the medical provider will determine the right treatment option for you. If you're prescribed, your medication ships discreetly and directly to your door for free. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hems has helped many men find the confidence they need in the bedroom, and they can help you too. Start your free online visit today at hems.com slash locked on. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash locked on to explore your personalized ED treatment options. Keep in mind, the products mentioned are chewable, compounded products which haven't been verified by the FDA for safety or effectiveness. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider to determine the appropriate treatment. Restrictions do apply. Visit the website for details and important safety information. Subscriptions are required and the price varies based on the product and the plan. Take control and feel confident. Try hymns today and be ready when it counts. Get ready to tackle all the NFL action this year with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. Ole Miss is currently two and a half point underdogs versus the Georgia Bulldogs, a line that I really expecting it will move in the coming days, but it looks stable right now. So my hunch in this game is kind of Vegas knows something. We'll talk about that in just a second. So when you get that hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We just mentioned in the FanDuel app that Vegas has Ole Miss as a two and a half point underdog in this game. And that is pretty cool when you're playing against Georgia. I was expecting somewhere seven to 10 if we were going to be real about it, but a two and a half point underdog, that is interesting. So I started looking at the stats and everything and what was going on. And you're digging through there through FanDuel. And you look down at the bottom, the the amount, the percent of money spread and the percent percent of bet spread on this list. Ole Miss is the underdog, and they're taking Georgia in 86% of the bets. The 87% of the money is on Georgia, but the line is not moving. For those who do not know, Vegas wants the line to be pretty close to a 50-50 spread on money so they can always make their money off of the juice of a bet. This is a situation where they're inviting Georgia to continue to pile on this bet. This would be a worst case scenario for Vegas if Georgia won this football game because of the amount of money that they would owe. Something isn't right. Vegas knows something that they're willing to do this. Now, I do expect this line to move at some point. They're probably trying to get as many bets as they can. They're going to move the lines to try and hedge their bets a little bit later on the week. But right now, with the amount of money and the amount of bets that are on the Georgia Bulldogs and the line is staying at two and a half points, the over-under is consistent as well. 
that is at the very least interesting. Now, this is going to be likely a rain game. And does Ole Miss have the advantage in this game if it rained Saturday? And if you look at weather.com, their forecast for the game, they're looking at 73% chance of rain. It's actually gotten a little bit worse over there. Rain likely, thunder likely, so there could be some kind of a weather delay. The high is going to be about 72 degrees, so that's not going to be a problem. And it's not going to be very windy, which wind is a problem when it comes to the passing game as well. When you look at quarterbacks in this game, the two quarterbacks that are set up, you have Carson Beck, who away from Sanford Stadium, he's 90 of 155,083 yards, five touchdowns, nine interceptions. I think that's the last three games. I may not have the Kentucky stats in this game, okay? So if I forgot that, I apologize. But if you look at Texas, Alabama, and Florida, this would be Carson Beck's numbers. So There's high yards, high volume, also consistently throwing interceptions. That is a problem when you're playing in the rain, especially when the other side is Jackson Dart, who's 198 for 278, 3,210 yards, 21 touchdowns, three interceptions. He's done a really good job of taking care of the football. It's kind of funny that after 22, we all thought that, hey, it's going to be a big deal that Jackson Dart learns to take care of the football. He's kind of an interception machine. And he's completely turned that around to where everybody has absolute trust in Jackson Dart. Listen, nobody would be surprised with the talent that's on Georgia's roster if they put in a running back that's good and that running back goes off in, on, in the game Saturday. That would surprise no one. This is the most talented roster that Ole Miss is going to go up against, and they're going to go up against them likely on a soggy field. That is advantage offense at all times. So thank goodness Ole Miss's defense, they got very much better athletically in the offseason. So you have two teams that are matched up in a similar way. The best defensive line that Georgia is likely going to face this year is going to be the Ole Miss Rebels. The best defensive line that Ole Miss is going to face this year is likely the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia and run defense, they're giving up over 100 yards a game. That's a rarity for Kirby Smart against other teams that run the football. Ole Miss is number one in the conference in run defense, giving up about 80 yards per game. So in a game where you're going to run the ball a lot, the clock is going to move. I would expect a low-scoring type game. But in the passing game, I do think that turnovers will be the key. Carson Beck is having trouble with turnovers this season. You saw the stats a little bit earlier on. The last three conference games or something, he's thrown 11 interceptions or something like that. There's not a human alive that that would not affect. Okay? So a wet game, all of this to where throwing the ball, you're going to be less confident that you would. You're probably going to hold the ball a little bit longer and allow Ole Miss's pass rush to affect the play even more than you would before. The key for Ole Miss is to not let Carson Beck get into a rhythm. You know that Georgia is going to start off with short passes and try to get him going. The same way that Ole Miss treated Jackson Dart against Oklahoma that snapped him out of it, Georgia is going to try to do the same thing. It'll be imperative of the crowd to affect this game as much as they can, as much as humanly possible. I'm talking 2003 Travis Johnson LSU territory. If Ole Miss can do that, if Carson Beck cannot get into rhythm, Ole Miss can affect this game. And it's you know, George is not going to be able to run the ball that effectively, and neither is Ole Miss if everything goes to chalk to the way they've been statistically over the course of this season. This is going to be a big game for J.J. Pegues and Xavion Harris and um, Walter Nolan and Akello Stone and all of those interior defensive linemen for the Ole Miss Rebels. They're going to be key. And if you can get them into third, long, third and long to where Walter Nolan comes off the field Jer Jared Ivey slides down into a three technique and you bring in Santer and Perkins to go with Princely and Mommy Ellen, you can do some work on the edge in pass rush. If that happens, Ole Miss can win this game straight up. Absolutely. Now, I've had the question asked, if Georgia plays their absolute best, can Ole Miss win the game? And it's probably not likely. Ole Miss likely needs some help in this football game. But the good news is 
Georgia's near perfect performance the second half against Alabama the game against Texas has kind of already happened and historically Georgia's only been able to put a couple of those together a year so knowing that and being on the road and the way that we can this can be affected and the weather and all of these things that are helping Ole Miss because all of these situations help Ole Miss if you look at all of the intangibles surrounding this game Ole Miss has the advantage a loss does not eliminate Georgia from the playoffs. A loss doesn't do anything. The urgency isn't there. You have a top 10 matchup at home, night game, ABC, and Ole Miss fans will remember that, against Tennessee the following week. This is a trap game on top of everything else for the Georgia Bulldogs. When you look at Ole Miss's side, you have the legacy game for Jackson Dart, the playoffs that Ole Miss desperately needs. Lane Kiffin needs that must win, that big win game to shut everybody up, to keep them from calling him James Franklin. All of these intangibles, being at home, the weather, all of that in Ole Miss's favor. So I think Ole Miss, if it rains, there's an advantage Rebels in that game. And I think it's going to allow people to be pretty raucous because honestly, whenever it gets soaking, people kind of, un they get they unwind a little bit. My father, whose birthday is today, happy birthday, Dad, um, went to the Ole Miss Alabama game in 2001. That was the first win over Alabama by Eli, the pass to Joe Gunn. That rained pretty consistently that day to the point where my dad always talked about after that game, my money in my wallet was wet. That's how much it rained. Now, if this game is that level, again, advantage Ole Miss, but I do expect some weirdness in that case to happen. Georgia's athletes are too good for weirdness not to happen in an extreme weather game, but we'll see how it goes. I do think if it rains, it is advantage Ole Miss, and the upset becomes even more of a possibility with rain falling from the sky. If that happens, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Could Ole Miss pack the house with 70,000 fans for the showdown against the Georgia Bulldogs? We're talking Rebel Pride, pack stands, and a game day atmosphere like no other. Find out if the vault can hit a new high yet again. Stick around. Hi, everyone. Let's talk about Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink, the world's first genetically engineered probiotic delivered, designed by PhD scientists to tackle those rough morning after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets, gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's actually this byproduct, not dehydration, that is the blame for the way you feel the next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break that byproduct down so you can wake up feeling great. I admit I was a little bit skeptical at first, so I decided to give it a try before a night out with friends. I made that first drink, enjoyed it. Enjoyed the evening and the next day, no sluggishness, no headache. I felt ready to tackle my Saturday morning hike with zero hesitation. So here's how it works. Drink pre-alcohol as your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly. Remember to pace yourself. Hydrate and get a good night's sleep. Enjoy the next day. Wake up refreshed and ready to take on the day. That's it. That's all you have to do. You want to try it for yourself? Go to zbiotics.com slash college and use the code LockedOnCollege all one word, at checkout to get 15% off that first order. And with their 100% money back guarantee, you got nothing to lose. If you're unsatisfied, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, that's zbiotics.com slash college. Use the code college for 15% off. Start feeling your best after a night out with Zbiotics. Also, game time is the place to get your Ole Miss tickets with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, Views from your seats and their lowest price guarantee, game time, takes the guesswork out of buying Ole Miss tickets. You know, you can see exactly what the view would be from every seat in the arena in Bald Hemingway Stadium or the Pavilion. There's not a bad seat there, but you can check that out before you buy the tickets so you know you'll be getting a good deal. They have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. They take the guesswork out of buying Ole Miss tickets with game time. And with this being the most anticipated season in Ole Miss history, every ticket is sold out. I might be able to help you out with getting tickets and getting into that Georgia game. So download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. That's all one word for $20 off your first purchase. Term supply. Again, create an account and redeem code 
L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So it's a really interesting thing that I'm pretty fired up about, and everybody might not care about this, but one thing that I've been keeping an eye on this whole season was whether or not Ole Miss was going to be able to get 70,000 in a season in the game for Georgia. And we saw the attendance numbers creep up each and every game that Ole Miss had. And 70,000 all of a sudden after the Oklahoma game didn't feel like a reach. So this is Operation 70,000. Get every ticket, any way that you can get into the stadium. I want 70,000 attendants at Bald Hemingway Stadium for the Georgia Bulldogs this Saturday. I think it would be really cool, and it would provide an unbelievable atmosphere for what could be a magical game. This is a legacy game for Jackson Dart, for Lane Kiffin, for the Ole Miss Rebels. This is a game that Ole Miss fans have been looking towards ever since the day after the Penn State game. You know, like when you're driving on a road in West Texas and you can see headlights like 15 miles down the road coming towards you, that's what this Georgia game was like for Ole Miss fans. They were looking forward to it. From the moment it ended at 52-17, Ole Miss wanted a different shot, and they're getting that shot. If you look at what Ole Miss has done this season, and this is just this season, Ole Miss started off with Furman and got 66,105 in the stadium. Their next home game was Middle Tennessee. They got 66,427. Georgia Southern set the stadium record at the time with 67,505. That was broken by the Kentucky Wildcats game, which was 67,616. And then the Oklahoma game was 67,926. Now, I realize that with the fire marshal, it could be problematic getting to 70. I do not know if Ole Miss can even get to 70. But with these numbers right here and only needing 2,000 to get in the game and knowing how many people are going to be in Oxford this weekend, you at least have to think about it. Look at what this season has done to the all-time attendance marks that Ole Miss has. Before this season, the record was the LSU game last year, and they had 66,703. Before that was in 2016, the Ole Miss game against Alabama was 66,176. Ole Miss has had five, four games this season over that Alabama game with Middle Tennessee, Georgia, Southern Kentucky, and Oklahoma with the last three setting attendance records. The Georgia game is likely going to do the same. The Georgia game has a chance to be absolutely massive for Ole Miss football. Everything you consider about Ole Miss football, they have the ability to be absolutely massive in. 70,000, that's 2,000 people. That's a lot of people. I get that. I understand that. But if Ole Miss can do that, they will be the first football football game to have over 70,000 people at a game in the state of Mississippi's history. That's cool. That's really cool. And in a game that's this meaningful, and Georgia travels very well, I would not be surprised that today RVs started arriving from Athens that were Georgia Bulldogs fans coming in. I used to go to the Ole Miss-Georgia game every single game that they played in Oxford or Jackson because the Georgia fans, it just felt cool. Georgia looked like, honestly, an extension of Ole Miss fans. And Whenever you go to the game, they look right. One's red and blue, one's red and black. It, but they acted pretty similarly. There was the same background. So I always kind of gravitated to the Georgia Bulldogs fans. This game, with this being not the final boss, but a level boss, for the Ole Miss Rebels and Jackson Dart and Lane Kiffin to get over, this will be absolutely fantastic. So will they get over 70,000 fans? We will see exactly how that goes. Anyway, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your go-to source for Ole Miss sports. We pride ourselves on offering the most comprehensive perspectives, which is why we're the number one Ole Miss podcast out there. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On SEC Podcast. Host Chris Gordy holds no punches covering the best conference in college football. Find Locked On SEC on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And exciting news, you can now become a Locked On Ole Miss Insider. It is the best and easiest way to stay on top of all things Ole Miss sports. It is our texting program that sends you notifications on anything relevant 
without the hassle of message boards filled with trolls. Enjoy, enjoy a 14-day free trial, experience the future of college sports coverage. We're constantly adding new perks as we grow, so do not miss out. The link is down in the description as well. For those of you watching on YouTube, we will send you to Locked On College Sports right now. Hotty toddy, everyone.